Son of a glitch. Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain There's no denying it's a fantastic new addition to one of the longest running video game franchises ever created. But let's get real here, it's got a lot of hilarious glitches to show off. Not convinced? Well, here we go. For some reason, after choosing continue from the title screen, the game can sometimes spawn Snake underneath Mother Base. Now this is completely useless as all you're able to do is run around down here. I'm not really sure what causes this, but choosing restart mission should fix the problem. You know, Mother Base can be a really huge and confusing place. I'll just ask for some directions. Hey, uh, do you, um, uh, uh... So all the female soldiers on my medical platform suddenly became male. And also, their eyebrows became really heavy. Now just to clarify, this is what Grey Chameleon should look like. Yeah, not even close. And this, that's just weird. This glitch is triggered by changing the console's date to that of your birthday, which you're asked to set at the very beginning of the game. I don't know how this connects exactly, but that's what made all the female soldiers' faces do this. The glitch may only work on your birthday in that case, and it may also fix itself once you've seen the special birthday cutscene that plays on Mother Base. The reason I think that is because once I'd seen it, all the female soldiers' faces return to normal. That's better. Although this is definitely one of the more humorous glitches in the game, it's a bit... No. No. Kill it with fire. Let's go check out the animal conservation platform. Maybe something cool will be... Okay, where'd everything go? You're not going crazy, most of the geometry for this platform isn't there. And it's not just invisible, it's literally not there. Snake is able to fall through the floor and into the ocean below, which doesn't end well. No idea what causes this to happen, but it sure is weird. But hey, at least it's well lit. That's something. Still on the medical platform, there's a way to get out of bounds using Snake's ability to jump and hang onto railings, and it's really easy too. If you press up against the rail like this and then climb over the corner section, quickly let go of the rail and hopefully Snake will land inside a wall. Now just move further into the wall and you'll be out of bounds. And Snake's head will disappear. Whoops. If you drop to the lowest floor, you'll see how the game handles the rendering of both Snake and the geometry around him. In some cases, Snake's head and prosthetic arm will disappear, or Snake will vanish altogether. Sadly, there's not too much you can do with this glitch, but there's another area of the medical platform you can get out of bounds, which also uses a rail. Jump over the midpoint of this rail by the stairs, and Snake will fall down and grab an invisible floor below. You can now shimmy along until Snake is out of bounds by going right through a wall. So now Snake is inside Mother Base, but not really. You can see one of the rooms in the lower parts of the platform, but aside from that, there's not much else you can do with this. In fact, trying to climb up through the floor will only end up one way, going down. If you're like me and enjoy taking your time during training, here's a glitch that creates a relaxed approach to the timer that starts once you begin a training side op. Begin a training side op as usual, but then just let the timer run down, and stay close to where the trigger for the side op usually appears. With less than a second left on the timer, quick dive onto the trigger and repeatedly press the button that starts the training once again. If you do this correctly, the timer will stay at zero and then disappear, but the targets will remain. You can then attack these targets and they'll still count towards the objective. Now you can just take your sweet time, there's no rush. This is a really great glitch if you're no good at finding and taking out the targets in the allotted time, but still want to be able to complete the side ops. The timing for the quick dive can be a bit tricky, but dive with around 26 milliseconds left on the clock and you should get it. This is an obvious oversight in the game's programming as they never intended you to be on the trigger the second the side op ends. Maybe we should grab some supplies before heading out on a mission. I'll just open my eye droid and have my supplies drop here, yeah. I guess now all we have to do is go pick them up. Ah, here they come. Useful supplies, oh baby. Uh, hmm. Well, that's not gonna work. For some reason, supply drops can do just that. Drop. Through the floor. Hey guys, check it out. I got the water pistol as a fun addition to my weaponry, and it's got some pretty interesting effects. But first of all, I'll need a volunteer. That should do just nicely. Now I just shoot you in the face, and... Stun Soldier gets up, then Stun Soldier falls down. I don't know why this is a thing, but hey, there you go. Ah well, before we head out on a mission, just time to hang with my buddies, am I right guys? Being perfectly parallel to the edge is boring, I want to hang on to the corner. Hey guy, come and join me! Oh, oh no... 
So, turns out hanging on the corner means you're still able to grab one of these guys, and this happens. Hey, buddy! <laughs> you okay? About dragging you down, that was just a joke. We cool? Anyway, I'm gonna go now. You just, uh, keep doing that. Out on a mission, and we got our buddy D-Horse, who can sometimes just vanish when whistled for. That's a nice trick, but you can also use D-Horse to clip through walls by having Snake ride like this and then getting Snake up against the wall till he goes through slightly in some cases. Have Snake then quickly jump off D-Horse and it's possible to get him to clip out of bounds. You can use this glitch to enter the area where you first see Sahelanthropus at the Serac power plant. Get D-Horse against the red gates like this and when the camera angle shifts slightly, jump off D-Horse. If you do this correctly, you'll be able to get on the other side of the gate to explore this Metal Gear hangar. It's basically an empty space with no guards or anything really, and the lighting effects are kinda crazy, but it's cool to see this place without getting shot at. Other features include floating material cases, floating grass, and bad geometry. I guess they weren't expecting us to see that. Upon trying to leave this area, you'll hit a snag in the fact that there's a ton of wooden boxes stopping us from entering or leaving. So in order to leave, you'll have to restart from the most recent checkpoint, and this will put you back to where you belong. Back on the subject of D-Horse, when driving a truck, if you call D-Horse while the truck is moving, you get some pretty funny glitchy effects. Whistle D-Horse and then begin slowing down, and the speed you're going when D-Horse magically spawns will give you a different result. For instance, D-Horse could land on the back of the truck. Whee, this looks fun and completely normal. Or D-Horse could land on top of the truck like this. D-Horse, get down from there, are you crazy? Good horse. Driving at a really slow speed will spawn D-Horse around the center of the truck and then you can kinda move around till D-Horse gets stuck in the front with Snake. It takes a bit of maneuvering. Uh-huh, what is this? But when you get it right, look, Snake's got a buddy riding shotgun. Almost. Don't mind me, fellas, just taking my horse for a ride. Another buddy you'll eventually be able to take with you on missions is Quiet. Just make sure you don't take her with you on missions 29 or 42, as players found that it can trigger a glitch that can potentially destroy your save file. Konami did issue a workaround saying you could still safely use Quiet during these missions if you use the butterfly emblem through the missions or avoid raising your bond level with Quiet to the max during the course of the mission. Since then, Konami have created update version 1.3 which fixes the glitch. But here's some things it didn't fix. Some of the physics with cars in the game are just plain weird. I drove a truck into the back of this car and, well, this explains itself. I don't think that's how gravity works, Konami. Just so you know, I mean, I'm no expert, but unless the front end of the car is stuck down with some insane industrial superglue, someone's got some explaining to do. If it's not the physics engine doing strange things, then some of the NPCs in this game have some strange driving skills. Like the prisoner escaping in Mission 27 Root Cause. I guess he just really wanted to get away. Not sure what causes this, a strange scripting error perhaps, but it's not the only time it happens in the game. Check this driving skill out in Mission 7. Now first of all, the car in question is actually facing the opposite way than intended, as it usually comes from where Snake is right now. The game seems to have a hard time figuring this out, and well, hilarity ensues. It's supposed to reverse from its starting point and then drive towards us, but hey, that works too. There's a brown bear near the Waxin barracks that does something really funny if you can get it to attack you in just the right spot. Have the bear chase you around and you need to have it stand on this sloped rock. Then it needs to take a swipe at you while it's at an angle. It'll get stuck in the ground, so do exactly as you see here, and that brown bear will go for a little ride down the hill. If you stand on the other side like this, the bear will only slide for a short time for some reason. I have no idea why I love this, but it's so much fun to see that bear slide. Like most modern games, every now and again some kind of weird deformations can occur, some more disturbing than others. Here, Snake's forehead seems to be assigned to some other part of Snake's animation rig, or at least that's what I'm gonna go with. Or sometimes entire faces will be left unrendered, as is the case of this prisoner who only has their eyeballs and teeth. What kind of torture she must have undergone, one can only imagine. Although seriously, this is just creepy when games do this. And sometimes even whole characters are just invisible, like this cutscene with Huey where only his round specks are rendered just floating around. This scene just becomes something else when Snake picks up an invisible Huey. Hey, maybe it's some kind of new stealth camouflage. We will truly never know. Here's a glitch that's very easy to reproduce. Usually Snake is able to throw enemies off ladders to stun them and this is how it usually goes. 
but sometimes if you're in the right position and throw them off, they can become frozen like this. Something about the position and the timing of the throw creates this glitch state where the enemy is no longer active. Either that, or they're frozen with fear from a two foot drop. When you're at the bottom of a ladder with an enemy at the top, make a noise to get them to investigate and then tap the button to climb the ladder, but don't climb any higher. Now, when the enemy climbs down the ladder, wait till the very last second and then throw them off. If you get the timing of this correct, you'll have your very own frozen enemy. I just love that pose, and the funny thing is, the enemy, despite being frozen, is still alive. The game must expect the enemy to fall a greater distance than it does, and doesn't know what to do when this situation occurs, hence the freeze. I saved my favourite glitch of the whole game for last. This is the invisible cardboard box glitch, which is exactly how you'd imagine it to be. Snake is inside a box, but said box is rendered invisible, which not only looks ridiculous, but makes Snake run like he's surrendering or creating some kind of new dance craze. I don't want to fight anymore, it's not nice. I just want to sit here and look at the trees. Now this glitch is completely random, but it has to do with the way Snake falls from a ledge while using the cardboard box. It's so random I wasn't expecting to get it, and so I missed it happening. But if you use the cardboard box a lot, you're sure to get it to happen at some point, and when it does, you're in for a treat. You can still slide around with the box, stand up and run around, all the goodness of the box, but without the box. Enemies will still just see a box, and anything that would usually destroy the box ends the glitch. But this is without a doubt my favourite glitch in the whole game. And there you have it, some amazingly weird and wonderful glitches you guys can try out. And if you like this episode, hit that like button, share it with everyone you know and love, but most importantly, please subscribe if you want to see more from the series. Head over to the Facebook page for the show, I post updates and sneak peeks to upcoming episodes and keep you guys in the know about all things Son of a Glitch. Or you can follow me on Twitter and keep updated that way. Go on, try it, you know, if you want to. <laughs>